welcome everyone. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at minimal APIs in ASP.NET Core. Minimal API is a feature introduced in ASP.NET Core 6 that simplifies the process of creating lightweight and minimalistic web APIs. It allows developers to build APIs with a cleaner and more concise syntax, making it easier to create small focused APIs without the overhead of traditional ASP.NET Core MVC or Web API frameworks. Minimal API is particularly suitable for scenarios where you need to quickly create a simple API without complex configuration. Now let's take a look at features and key points of Minimal API in ASP.NET Core. First one being simplified routing. Minimal API uses a simplified routing model where you define routes directly in the code without the need for a separate configuration file. Routes are defined using Lambda expressions, which makes them more concise and expressive. Next is lightweight. Minimal API is designed to be lightweight and minimalistic. It eliminates the need for controllers and reduces boilerplate code, resulting in smaller, more focused APIs. Endpoint routing. It leverages ASP.NET Core's endpoint routing system to handle incoming HTTP requests. You can define HTTP methods like get, post, put, delete, etc. and route patterns directly in your code. Middleware like syntax. The code for Minimal API follows a middleware like syntax allowing you to chain and compose functions to handle requests and responses. This makes it easy to add custom logic at various stages of request processing. Next is content negotiation. Minimal API supports content negotiation, allowing you to return data in different formats like JSON, XML, etc. based on client preferences. And finally, we have dependency injection. Like traditional ASP.NET Core, Minimal API supports dependency injection, enabling you to inject services and components into your API endpoints. Now let's go ahead and explore all these using some examples. So here I have opened my Visual Studio and I'll be clicking on create a new project and here I'll be selecting ASP.NET Core Web API template and then click on next. After that I'll be putting over here the name like let's say minimal weather API. That's the name of the application. Click on next. And here, if you see, we have this option which says use controllers unchecked to use minimal APIs. And if you see the I icon over here, hover on it, it says whether to use minimal APIs instead of controllers. Now, in this case, we definitely want to make use of minimal APIs. So we will uncheck this checkbox and click on create. This is going to create a template project for us. And here, let's quickly take a look at what all it has generated. So in the Solution Explorer, as I can see, we have two files, appsettings.json and program.cs. And then we have launch settings.json under properties. And then we have these dependencies and connected services. So this is the default template project that we have created. And here, if I open up program.cs, it's kind of making use of this minimal API. As you can see, it's creating a get request and the method name is weather forecast and it's returning some results to us. If I run this one, here we have the API coming up and let's click on try it out. Just click on execute and it will give us some results over here. That's day temperature summary and temperature. So it's working the default template without any issues. Now let's go ahead and implement open weather API. And in this one, we'll also try to cover caching and API versioning as well. So the first thing that we need to do is make use of HTTP client. And to do that, we'll be adding this service called add HTTP client. Once we have done that, we'll be creating a method which will be sending a request 
to open weather API and it will then get the result. So here let's have open weather API and, and then we'll be creating API route over here using app.mapget. So this is going to create a get request, HTTP get request, and this is the route. Over here, you can see we are passing two parameters, first being the parameter that will fetch the weather of a given city, and the other one is the client factory. That's HTTP client factory, using which we will be creating an instance of HTTP client. Now here we have created a method which is accepting these two parameters, fetch weather data. Now fetch weather data, we have the API key, and here we are making use of the HTTP client factory to create the HTTP client. And then this is the usual method using which we are getting the result set. Now here we are getting the result as a string. So you can see that it says read as a string asynchronously and then provide that result. Further, we are returning that result. So using this approach, we have created a minimal API to fetch weather data using Open Weather API. Let's run this and see it in action, and then we'll see how we can return an object, basically. That's a weather data class that we'll be creating. And then we'll also see how to cache this data and how to create API versions as well. So let's run this now. And here, and here you can see we have this API weather city. Let's expand this, click on try it out, and enter the name of the city. Click on execute. And here we have the response body. So we can see the coordinates, latitude, longitude, weather data that's coming up, mean, haze, description, and then the temperature coming up over here feels like temperature, temperature max, pressure, and all. So this is the data that we are now receiving using the Open Weather API. Now let's go ahead and stop it for a moment. Let's first of all add a model folder over here. And inside that we'll have the weather response. So this is the weather response class that we have created. We have the coordinates, weather, base, mean, visibility. And this is the same class which we made use of when we created APIs using ASP.NET Core controller method. Now, in the fetch weather data where we were returning this as string, we'll now be returning it as an object. So here what we have done is we have tweaked our code a bit after we created the weather response class. What we have done is, first of all, this is now an asynchronous method. So we are returning weather response. And here we are reading the content as a string itself. Then we are using a JSON serializer dot deserialize. And we are converting this content to this class and then returning the data. In case there's some issue, we are still throwing the exception as is. So let's go ahead and now execute this and see it in action. So here we don't see any difference as far as, as, far as the UI is concerned. And now click on try it out. Here we'll be entering the name of the city and click on execute. And there we have the response body now. And this is a proper object being returned now as JSON. So the weather response class that we have created is converted as JSON and then it is sent over. So instead of string, we now have a JSON response. So now that's done, let's go ahead and see how we can implement caching in this minimal API project that we have created. So as mentioned, in order to implement caching, we make use of this line called buildu.services.addMemoryCache. And once we have this, we introduce iMemoryCache over here in our map get method as a parameter. And then we provide a name over here as memory cache. Once that's done, we'll be passing this parameter to our method fetch with the data async. And we'll just pass it over here as memory cache. And then we'll add this parameter in our method. So now we have memory cache over here. So it's time now to tweak this data that we have.
And in this method, as you can see over here, we are using the city as the key to identify whether that key exists in the cache or not. And if it exists in the cache, we are getting the value directly associated with that key and we are returning that data using the return cached weather data. If it does not exist, if the city is not present in the cache, then we are doing the usual operation over here. And we are just putting it inside a variable called cached weather data. And then that cached value is set in the memory cache over here. And this time we are setting the time as from seconds. So after 300 seconds, this is going to invalidate this data and it will again make a new API request. So now let's have it over here. Let's have a breakpoint over here and run this application and have one breakpoint over here as well. Now expand this, click on try it out and enter the name of the city. Once that's done, click on execute. Now here, you can see that it's trying to find out whether this city is part of the cache or not. And if I continue to the next line, so if it's present, it will directly come over here as return cache data. If not, it will go inside and make an API request to the open weather API. So let's continue. And there we go. So it was not existing in the cache. So it came over here and now we'll be setting it, returning it. And we have the response coming up over here as you can see over here in the response body. Now, if I go ahead and click it one more time, you again have the breakpoint set over here. And now if I click on continue, you can see that it skipped line 58 where we were trying to make an API request. And it's just returning the data from the cache. And then we have the response coming up over here. There you have it. So that's how we can implement caching in our minimal API. Now let's go ahead and see how we can also add versioning to this. So we'll be exploring how different versions of the same method can be created in minimal API. So to implement API versioning in minimal API, the first thing that we need to do is install this NuGet package. That's asp.versioning.http. And you need to ensure that the version is 6.5.0 because that's supported on ASP.NET Core 6. If you want to implement it on ASP.NET 7, then you can obviously go with the latest package that's available. So once you install this, you can head over to program.cs file. Now in program.cs file, the first thing that we need to do is initialize the API versioning. Now here we have a couple of parameters like default version, report API version, assume default version when unspecified, and the last one, which basically allows us to pass the version information as part of the query string. So that's what we are making use of over here. Options dot API version reader equals new URL segment API version reader. Now once that's done, the next step is over here you can define what versions you will be supporting. Like here I've created two versions, version one and version two. And then using this version one and version two, we are creating a version set over here. So we are saying app.new API version set dot has API version, version one, and then version two, report API versions, and then build. So this is the version set that we have created. Now if you see the API URL, we are not changing anything over here. Instead, we are passing a parameter over here called API version. This is int over here. And then we have the city and remaining things are like client factory for http client memory cache for caching and then http context now here what we are doing is we are saying where version equals new api version and then we are passing this api version over here and you can provide the major and min versions by separating major comma minor versions so here we have api version as major and if you want to provide the min version as well. So here I can say zero. That way we are sure that you only need to pass one, two, three, and so on and so forth. After that, here at the end, you will notice we are saying with API version set, and then we are providing this version set that we created. And then we are saying that has API versions, 
and these two versions that we had, version 1 and version 2. So that is now completing the versioning for this particular API method that we have. Now, if I execute this, let's have a breakpoint over here and over here as well at these two places. Let's see what exactly happens when we run this. So here we'll be clicking on try it out and we'll be providing a version, let's say 2 and city as Mumbai. Click on execute now and here you can see the version that is being passed is 2 and then we have this version being passed further down the line which to this method fetch where the data async. Let's click on continue and here you can see when the major version is compared it's coming up as 2. So this line of code is getting executed continue and we are presented with the result. If I scroll down over here you can see the city coming up as Mumbai and then the version is also appearing over here. So that way we can implement API versioning in our minimal APIs.